Oh man. Oh my gosh, Barracuda. Hey everybody, what's up? Check it out, Orange Beach, Alabama. Very pretty day today, even though it's early winter. It's a holiday season, lots of boats out having a good time. It's hard to beat this weather right now. But we're gonna go either 15 miles, 30 miles, 50 miles. I haven't quite decided yet. We'll see uh, what the seas are when we get out there. It's supposed to be flat, but we do have a north wind. So when you have a north wind, it's flat to about six miles and it can possibly get choppy. So we'll find out when we get out there, but I'm happy that you can join me. Don't forget to go subscribe if you haven't yet and we'll see you at our fishing spot. Y'all, so we're pretty much sitting in 100 feet of water. It's 93 feet, give or take. You can see the divots down there. And then this is our structure that we're fishing. Hopefully we can catch some fish to bring home and cook up, do a nice catch, clean and cook. But first I need to put down one of the most valuable assets you can have on a boat. And that is a spot lock or remote control trolling motor. Not sponsored by them at all, but this is my Minn Kota. Now I highly suggest, and it says to on here, right there but uh a lot of us don't listen and i learned my lesson always when you're running put this locking collar all the way down and then move it to your desired depth when you get to your spot because i didn't trolling motor self-deployed snap this whole shaft so <laughs> if you're <laughs> i know it says to do that and i admit to myself i need to pay attention more but like i said it's one of the most valuable tools or assets you can have on a fishing boat there we go. Now I run mine off a Dakota lithium battery, a single 36 volt battery. I've showed this before, but if you're unsure or haven't seen it, there's my 36 volt Dakota lithium. Now they do partner with us and I have a promo code. I'll link that down in the video description, but that's my 36 volt lithium that holds up well. Now we're sitting on top of our spot. What I do, make sure the prop is on. Hit spot lock and we are spot locked on top of our fishing spot. <laughs> Very easy to use, I'm telling you. They're expensive, no brand is perfect. I always suggest get the brand of trolling motor that you have the closest service center to you. I have a Minn Kota service center real close to me. That's why I have the Minn Kota. Let me show you what I'm using and we're gonna go ahead and drop down because that's why y'all came here is to see us catch fish. This is a bird of prey, three quarter ounce pompano jig with 30 pound fluorocarbon leader. And that's about two feet of leader, a Daiwa BGMQ 3000 with 15 pound power pro braid and a Crowder E-Series seven and a half foot medium heavy power fast action rod. Very lightweight, sensitive, but strong. That's our tackle breakdown and boat setup. Let's drop down and try to catch us some fish. But anyway, let's drop this jig down. I like to let it fall all the way to the bottom. So once you hit the bottom, reel in your slack and give it some sharp twitches. Just like that, it's real easy. We're already getting hits. Like sharp twitches, it looks like an injured bait. Gets their attention real quick. Oh, oh yeah, see? Look how effective that is. I mean, it works so well that way. <laughs> this is fun. That's why I like doing it. Let's see what it's gonna be. Oh, what are you? Okay. First fish of the day is an American red snapper. That is a good eating fish. They're highly regulated here in the Gulf of Mexico. We are out of their season right now. So he has to go back. All right, and he's gone. <laughs> Feisty little thing. Let's keep on fishing and drop it down and see if we can catch something that can actually go in the box. So it's down there again. Oh, got hit on the fall. You always gotta pay attention. That's where I like the braided line because you can feel everything that's happening. Oh, it came off. <laughs> that one hit it on the fall. I came out a little bit deeper on a structure that is much bigger than what I was fishing. I mean, there's still plenty of snapper out here, but there's other chances of catching different species as well. Oh, trigger fish would be nice, but I just hooked something. 
oh, with some pull to it. I'll tell you that. I love doing this, man. It's so fun. Oh, throwing these little jigs, these banana jigs, is incredibly exciting and fun. Wow, this sucker's just dead weight. What are you? Come on. Let's hope I can get you up before the big amberjack eat you, whatever you are. All right. It's a red snapper. Pretty one. But once again, it's got to go back. And he gone. Heck yeah. Oh. Heavy hitter. Heavy hitter. Oh, real heavy hitter. Mm. Yo. What a stud fish. I want to keep it out of that structure. Come on, get up here. Uh, get up here. <laughs> Don't want him taking me into that structure. It sticks really high off the sea floor. So as long as you stay vertical, you can be pretty good. But as soon as they start swimming to the side, you can get cut off. All right, I just got sight on it. What species are you? Dadgummit. <laughs> I mean, it's flood catching fish. Just not ones that you have to throw back. Oh, but it shows you these little jigs can catch some really nice fish. Look at that. What a beautiful red snapper, man. It's cool how his eyes like are like a gyroscope. They're staring at us. So we get to let him go and hopefully come catch him when the season opens back up. Last year you could keep them all the way till Christmas, but this year's the season got cut short. So, got to go back, man. All right. And yeah, he swims down. That's the good thing about this type of fishing is uh, we're not too deep to where they come up with barotrauma. So, I have put on a 100 gram Shimano jig. This is just a butterfly jig. Let's drop it down. Oh, my goodness. Get up here, man. It is. It's a bobo. Oh, come on. Energetic little thing. Ah. Dad, come. Get up here. <laughs> These things are fun. Uh, all right. That's a nice one. So that's your little toonie, otherwise known as a bobo or bonita. A little bit different than your... These are actually false albacore. They're not the same as your Atlantic bonito. Let me get this jig out of them and throw them back. Jet them back down. He gone. So once again, I like changing things up and I have a bird of prey swing jig. This is a half ounce circle hook and a piece of fish bites. Just synthetic bait. You can use it for surf fishing, but I like using it out here as well. Let's drop it down. Oh, dang. Something liked it. Something really liked it. Mm. Don't take me in that structure. And I really hope the bottlenose dolphin doesn't eat my catch. I have two big factors against me right now. Oh my gosh. Another bottlenose dolphin. Mm. Dag. <laughs> this is so cool. Using the fish bites in 100 feet of water, over 100 feet deep. Cook something pretty big. It's a nice fish. Wait till you see this fish. It's a red snapper and it has a tag on it. That's cool. Check that out. It's a tagged fish. See that? I'm gonna take a picture of that tag and call it in when we get back to the dock. I think they're, uh, they give out rewards or money or something, but that's cool. Got a tag in it. Heck yeah, and then we gotta release this joker. <laughs> He's ready to go. We're gonna let it go. I got the number on the tag. <laughs> he gone. That was cool. So I came out even deeper and I'm going to try one of these little Daiwa jigs. This is a 20 gram. So about the same size as that banana jig I was throwing. Oh my gosh. Something just tried ripping that out of my hand. Come on. There it is. Oh, it's a smoker. It's a smoking drag fish. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. Oh. oh, there's no way that's going to be landed. I mean, maybe. 
but the way that sucker just took some line out, I hope I don't get cut off. Wow. That was incredible. I was trying to say it's smoke and drag, but I just couldn't get the words out. Ugh. What a beast. Wow. Oh, I hope I can keep it away from that structure. Mm -mm. Oh no. Oh no. Ugh. Probably not. <laughs> Get your big butt up here, you. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh man, he's trying to get me in that structure. I can feel it. I think he did. Maybe not. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. He's taking me in there. <sighs> trying to. <sighs> yep, knew it. I knew it, knew it, knew it. All right, I've upped my leader material because that's what had touched the structure and got cut. Okay. Man, I almost had them turn. But it almost doesn't count here. Okay, I've had to do some modifications on this jig because the hooks are straightened out. I'll put a big old BKK hook on there. I'm gonna drop this down. Mm. That one hit. All right. I have a little bit stronger hook on there now. Strong leader. As long as it stays away from the structure and any other big predators, we should be able to see this fish. I hope. Mm. Mm. Felt like it just got, oh man. It's an Almaco about to get smacked by a big amberjack. Oh my gosh, Barracuda. Whoa, oh my goodness. Bro, that Barracuda just, Oh my gosh. Well, that was just a lot. This is my dinner. Oh, get in the boat. Good Lord. Oh, I hate, I normally stay pretty calm. That joker jumped into the boat trying to chase after that Almaco. Wow. That was a lot. Good gracious. See, it's a scary, scary world down there. Well, this is an Almaco Jack. This is our dinner. We're going to take that home. Very good eating. No size limit. And they don't have a season. Keep them year round. I'm glad I was able to get him. Thank you, buddy. You survived all that just to go to my kitchen. But we're going to take that jig out and keep on going. That was insane. I hope that got on camera. <laughs> Almost got smacked by a barracuda. If it had jumped in the boat, he would have been coming home with me as well. How cool was that? My leader's still good. Hook's good. Let's try that again. I'm glad I got something to throw in the cooler though. I pulled his gills out, let it bleed, and those are actually very good eating. Nice buttery flavor on those Almaco Jacks. I don't know what I'd do if I got hit by a barracuda in the face. I guess it depends on the severity of the hit, like if his mouth was open or not. That was, that was insane. All right, see if we can get a couple more fish. There's one. Mm. Got hit pretty hard. Ah, get up here. Get up here. Mm. Oh, he's getting chased by something big. Get up here, man. Ah. Ah. Beast of a fish down there. Uh, let's get after it. Woo! Who needs a gym when you have this type of fishing? How cool. Uh, can't give up. Can't give up on them. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
Get in here. This has turned fun. Look at that nice Almaco jack, y'all. <laughs> That's a pretty fish right there. They have real big dorsal fins. A lot browner and darker and wider body than your AJ's. But that's a Daiwa KO jig. If you want to catch these fish, highly suggest don't use the hooks that come on them. I put on a three extra strong BKK hook, 50 pound leader. He frayed my leader. I got to cut some of that off. But we have us another Almaco jack for the cooler. This has turned into a fun trip. <laughs> Took a sip of Gatorade and cut off some of my leader. That's why I like tying a longer leader because then when you get hung up, you don't have to redo your double uni knot or all bright or FG, whichever one you like. Right now, I'm just doing a double uni. It has practically never failed me. I wish I could play these fish out because this is a light tackle for this type of fishing, considering the size fish out here. But it's more than capable to handle those Almacos. But between the big giant AJs and the Barracuda, I have to winch them up and it's really tiring at 120 feet. <laughs> but it is fun dropping this jig back down. And I think I kind of found the magic number and magic speed for these Almacos today. All right, there's the structure. Short twitches. Yep. Oh man, that's the speed they like. Short little twitches. Like I would be fishing for Spanish mackerel. There it is. Yep. That's exactly the speed they like. Mm. Uh, just gotta keep it out from that structure. Mm. Keep their head turned. <laughs> about a workout <laughs> just gotta keep their head turned get up here you powerful fish wow <sighs> tell you what I won't want to throw this on anything lighter at all Medium heavy rod. Braided line. Heavy leader, good hooks. There it is. Uh, here you are. Oh. Uh oh. Barracuda and AJ. Just trying to get it. That's an amberjack, too. He's going to have to go back. That's a greater amberjack. Hardest fighting fish out here in my opinion pound for pound these are out of season he would be too short anyway send them down it's fun catching them on that little thing the aj is not what i wanted i wanted an almaco crazy seeing the giant like 60 pound amberjack coming up and trying to eat these smaller fish wow it's kind of scary <laughs> i'm gonna drop a few more times i'm running on limited daylight now once that sun hits that horizon around 4 30 that's yeah, 3 50 so about 30 minutes of daylight and then I got to run back in let's call it dinner that was some crazy action there for a second I'm continuing to drop down this jig I have one more and maybe I can pick up another fish to go in the cooler I've been hearing that YouTube's been unsubscribing some people I don't know why but if you noticed that you are not subscribed it would be a great time to go check and hit that subscribe button down below okay we have something that's pretty doable until it gets eaten by whatever monsters down there. Good gracious, man. Just let me get a fish. Just let me get a fish. <laughs> Those big amberjack, once they're fired up, it's hard to get anything past them. Yeah, especially if it's a small bee liner ah, or Almaco, little snapper. Maybe this is something else that can go in our cooler. Oh, it's another Almaco. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I dropped down the jig again. Woo. There we go. Dinner again. Yes, it's our third one. Look at that. What a pretty fish. They're so brown. I love their fins on the bottom with that white outline. Really neat fish. So 
gets to go in the cooler. Woo! We have something to take home and cook. That is awesome. <laughs> I was getting discouraged because I was catching red snapper over and over and over again. It is fun, but when they're out of season, it's like, hey, I hate catching these things, throwing them and letting the dolphin eat them, by, not by choice. But I uh, still caught that one with the tag. And then we have three fish we can take home and eat. Everything else here is just an additional bonus. I'm gonna keep on jigging. If I lose it or it gets too dark, we'll head back to the house. made it back <laughs> also there's a guy fishing over here and uh i kept three almaco jacks and so i kept one for myself to do a catch and cook and then i gave him two but old blue heron fred himself is sneaking on my boat what exactly does he think he's doing <laughs> let's go see if we can sneak up on him <laughs> this little joker is sitting on my boat <laughs> uh, yeah i caught you i caught you i wish i had something for you but i don't <laughs> that's funny man it's time to clean our almaco jack i had three i gave two away to a gentleman at the boat ramp who was fishing and didn't have any luck so he got to take some home and then i kept this one we're just going to fillet it out with the skin on it's going to be really easy. It's kind of like cooking skin on salmon, or you can do the same thing with pompano as well. I like to take the back of the knife and get these very fine scales off because you don't want to be munching on scales. And I do want to mention this is a seven inch sword flex fillet. They'll be linked down below. All right. Once you get those scales off, flip it around, do the same thing. They're very small scales. This is an easy fish to clean. Unlike if you were to try to scale a sheep's head, you might as well get out a chainsaw. And it's probably best to do this outside. If you do it in the kitchen, your wife or girlfriend might get mad at you. <laughs> now that the fish is scaled, it's time to fillet it out. Take a sharp knife, feel where that head meat starts, which is about here. So you can go through and cut down. Look how pretty their meat is. These are Almaco Jacks. They taste very good when fresh, and I bled this one out and put in that ice brine like I showed you, and the meat's gonna come out really nice. Has a good buttery taste. Very similar to pompano is how I like to explain it to people if you've ever had pompano. They have thin skin, it's real easy to fillet. I like to make a shallow cut, and then run your knife down, and I like to meet in the middle on their spine, and then do the same thing here. Make a shallow cut up the top, all the way to that first cut that you made. And then you can fillet it off and meet your middle cut. Boom, really easy, delicate meat. Go around that rib cage, come down, and we're keeping the skin on. Slice off. And there's a nice filleted out Almaco Jack. Look at that meat. Bleeding it out and keeping it in the ice brine makes it nice and firm and also clean. So there are some pin bones you got to get out of this fillet. They kind of run all the way down in the middle. You can just make a little slice and pull those pin bones out. Trim up some of that stomach lining if you want. It's not going to hurt you, but make a little cleaner and this is what we're going to cook oh with the skin side down such a good taste in fish that you can catch year round when you go offshore if snapper season's closed amberjack season is closed trigger fish season when it's closed there's other stuff you can catch and keep that are just as good if not better so let's do the other side nice sharp cut rotate that knife and go down the dorsal fin all the way to the tail flip it around and fillet it off now once you get to that middle you want to go up and back down their bone which is their spine so you don't miss that bottom section of meat cut off 
splay off the ribs. I can trim this stomach lining out some. Alrighty. And then once again, the pin bones. So you can just feel where they are. They're small little bones. They stop about here. So cut that middle section out and they pull out real easy. And there's the pin bones out. And we have two gorgeous fish fillets. Look how fresh these are. They're gonna be so good cooked up. We're gonna do just lightly seasoned with a side of steamed broccoli. We're gonna do a healthy dish so we can enjoy and taste this fresh fish. So there's our filleted out Almaco Jack. Very pretty fish. We didn't miss hardly any meat. If you want to, they do have a nice collar right there that tastes pretty good fried up or cooked as well. But we're gonna dispose of this and see you in the kitchen. I have some broccoli here. It's gonna be a nice healthy side dish. And uh, we're gonna cook all this in a cast iron and out on the blackstone. So let's go ahead and prep these up. Have some lemon as well. It's gonna go with it. It's a quick and easy meal, but healthy. We've already rinsed this off. Let's go ahead and cut them up into cookable pieces. So we're gonna cut the stem off. Mm, that's gonna get discarded. And then these are about the pieces that you want. We prepped our broccoli and I have the nice Almaco Jack, the two fillets that were cleaned up and dried in this bag. Let's go get our Blackstone turned on, get the heat ready, and we'll see you outside and get ready to cook. I like cooking on this thing. It's nice outside. It's easy to do. Mm. That's working. We need to prep our pan, prep our skillet for the broccoli. So there's some extra virgin olive oil. We'll put some on here as well for non-stick for our fish. Have a tablespoon of butter. And we wanna let that melt and now skin side down. Ooh, you hear that sizzle? <laughs> That's what you want. Spread that oil out. Heck yeah, salt. Black pepper. So we got salt, black pepper, minimal, and then squeeze a lemon, and that's gonna cook with the fish. Keeping it healthy today. Boom, that's it. So that's gonna, that's gonna cook nice and good. So the broccoli's gonna take a lot longer than the fish is gonna take. But it'll give time for that fish to cool down. But got our butter and oil. Now it's time to add our broccoli. Sauteing slash steam. So add that in there. And that's just gonna cook down and get soft. I don't like real crunchy broccoli, but I don't like it super soft either. Everyone's different. Add some onion powder. <laughs> We're in the south, it's very humid. So the onion powder's kinda caked up. Garlic powder. And half a lemon. And you can hear Ono in the background. But that's just gonna cook down, get soft and simple, healthy, and it's gonna be delicious. Very fresh ingredients. Let's check on our fish. And go ahead and flip it. There we go. Oh yeah, see how that skin gets nice and crispy? A lot of healthy fish oils in the skin and the meat, especially in these Almaco Jacks. They're very buttery, white, and flaky, but firm, and they cook up nice this way. You don't want to overpower them with a lot of seasoning, and that's why we just did salt, pepper, and lemon. It's a pretty gloomy day, but it is pretty out here. It's always nice coming out on my back porch, seeing the water, cooking these fish. That came from the fresh Gulf of Mexico right here in the Alabama Gulf Coast. And I always like to say we know exactly what species it was, how it was taken care of, how it was cooked, and it makes it even better. So this are going to be done very soon. And the broccoli's gonna take a little longer. We're just gonna add a little bit of water in there as well. Gonna allow it to steam. Now, if you wanna put a lid on there, you can. But I kinda like that water to just make some steam, but not be a lot of condensation. So the broccoli's still a little crispy and sauteed flavored as well.
Y'all, the fish is ready. So we don't want it dried out. Look at that. That's pretty, isn't it? That olive oil gives it a nice color to it. The broccoli's almost done. See how the stalks are getting soft? That's what you want. Y'all, it's time to bring these inside. Look at that. I love cooking in this cast iron. Just gives it a nice good flavor, especially a well-seasoned cast iron. Plated up our food, and Mom is here to try some with us. So she gets to uh, she gets to be the first taste tester. You ready to try some? I'm I feel bad I have to eat first. No, that's fine. Alrighty. You get to do the honors. Look how white and firm that is. Should be nice and buttery flavor. Mm -mm. Natural fish with not a lot of seasoning. I like the black pepper and lemon. Yeah, simple. Mmm. What you think? <laughs> Again? Oh, that's good. You haven't tried Almaco Jack before, have you? Mm, you've had remember. Amberjack, but I don't think you've had Almaco. I don't know. I can't remember. They're a little bit different. Almaco is more like a that's pompano. That's good. Yeah. How's the broccoli? Mm. Good? Done perfect, whatever you did. Sweet. Simple. I like mm. simple dishes a lot of times. That still come out good. <laughs> oh, I'm going to try me a bite now, so Mom approves. <laughs> that pelican just went and dove and got him some... Got him some food. So I guess it's all our lunch time or dinner time. Y'all look at that moist piece of fresh Almaco dripping with the juices. Let's give it a try. Mm. Gotta watch out for bones. Oh, wow. That fish is good. It's firm. Very firm. It's unlike, you know, like your redfish and stuff like that. It just tastes like you're eating something that came out from the deep water. You know, like clean Gulf of Mexico water. That is, that is good. I'm gonna have to get another bite. Color of that meat right there with a nice crust on it. And don't be afraid to eat the skin. That's why we left it on there. It's scaled, it was cleaned. There's a lot of healthy fish oils and fats between the meat and the skin. That's good for you. There we go. With a piece of crispy skin on there. Mmm. Great, great charred flavor. Man, since the minimal seasoning gave it just enough to be tasty on the palate, but you taste that fish by itself is wonderful. I'm going to take some broccoli, just a healthy side item, and we're going to have to let you go. I appreciate you for watching as always. Go try this recipe on your own, and less is more when it comes to these fish right here. So we'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing episode. Hit that subscribe button down below. All of our partners are linked down below. Most importantly, I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you later.